Welcome to another Faith Clinic Fellowship with Evangelist Terry Brunson God's man of mighty grace power to be activated through faith unto the Spirit's fruit of good works. Before I begin the teaching I want to speak in a word of knowledge in the gift of the Spirit by discernment. I am seeing a person being healed of a sickness that the doctors have given up on you. You have pilled in and pilled out day in and day out. God's faith is your medicine now. I speak the word of life and health in God for you. Sickness is a big battle to doctors sometimes to make them give up on finding a cure, but in God, sickness has to obey the word fixed in faith, wrapped in grace, and set in the Spirit. Use your faith to believe in healing as a benefit of inheritance in salvation. Let us go into peace and remain well in faith when asked to be healed. Believe to receive and be well in God's covering of mercy and grace. Now let us open our teaching in power. Our topic is the Gospel from Hell. It's sad that people speak so lightly of hell in jokes and use hell in curse words flippantly and casually. The fact of the reality of hell is taught throughout the Bible. Jesus was God who came to teach that hell is the result of sin and damnation. Salvation is the cure of hell's results of sin. When people question the fact and reality of hell, they are actually questioning the authority of the Bible and the authority of Jesus himself. There is a real place called hell. Many are heading to hell. Many ridicule the idea of hell because people don't like it and try to laugh it away. You can laugh your way into hell, but you can't laugh your way out once you're there. The Bible says, in Proverbs 28 verse 5, evil men understand not the judgment of hell. People don't like the idea of judgment, and they don't like the idea of hell. I want all in the sound of the Faith Clinic podcast message to become rich enough to pay attention to the message on hell. 1 Samuel 20 verse 3 says there is but one step between you, death, and hell. The Bible also says in Psalms 55 verse 15, Let death seize upon the wicked and let them go down quickly to hell. I just got one question. What in hell do you want? Hell is going to be a place of vile associations where the wicked will congregate together says Revelation 21 verse 8, again, but the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, fornicators, and all the sexually immoral, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, called hell, which will be the second death if you go to hell you will have plenty of company in hell there is. Only a bad crowd is going to be there, that's the company you'll you'll find in hell. Also the devil and his demon cohorts will be part of that company in hell. Revelation 20 verse 10 says, And the devil all the demons he deceived will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone called hell. Hell is going to be a place of burning. People want to ridicule the idea of hellfire. Listen to Jesus Christ, Matthew 25 verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Then, read Revelation 20 verse 14 where the Bible makes it clear and plain that there is fire in hell, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death and then, in Revelation 21 verse 8, the verse that we began with, but the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. What did Jesus mean when he said, it is better for people to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. That is Matthew 18 verse 8. What Jesus is saying is whatever price you pay, miss hell. Don't go to hell, no matter what it costs. What Jesus is saying, it would be better to be a maimed saint on the way to heaven than a healthy sinner on the way to hell. That's what he's saying, no matter what it costs, no matter what the cost, don't go to hell. That's what Jesus said, it is better to be a crippled saint than a healthy sinner going to hell. There is a heaven to win and a hell to shun. Hell is hot, judgment is sure, sin is the problem, but Christ is the cure. Many are storing up wrath for the day of wrath. There is a gospel to believe and a grace to receive and a unity in God to achieve. God is a good God and we should be terrified of that fact because we are not good. God has hell for the bad. A good God cannot let bad people in heaven. No one will be let into heaven doing what got the devil kicked out of heaven. There is good news that hell doesn't have to be a part of your future. Why? The Gospel Plan of the Man Jesus Christ 
You can be made anew to shun the bad for the good in Jesus. God created you and God can recreate you in the new birth experience. The salvation plan belongs unto God to work it on you if you accept it. Psalms 3 verse 8 says so. The gospel of change is a work of God on the inner you. Only God can awaken the dead sinner to want to be saved. If you try on your own, you will miss the high mark that God has for being good. God's mark of being good is the Jesus mark. You have to be good as Jesus to get into the salvation plan. You can do just that. In Christ, you can make the change from bad to good. It is not of yourself, but it is in Christ. There is an in Christ experience by an invitation of grace to draw you to salvation in Christ. There is also an in herentance gift of righteousness that you cannot work towards outside of the in Christ experience of being born again. Then there is the indwelling of the Spirit. The salvation call is a part of the work of God to change you who want to be awakened and quickened to new life to be strengthened in the new man of you deep in your soul. Ephesians 3 verse 16 says that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. Also notice Ephesians 4 verses 23 to 24 which says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God's creation in righteousness and in true holiness in us, by Jesus. Philippians 1 verse 6 says being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 verse 11 says being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God's working in us. It is of God's working and not ours that this inner man change comes about. The dead you in the spirit is awakened to a new life. In Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 5 it outlines the process. One in you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Two wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Three among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. For but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Five even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together in Christ, by grace ye are saved winky face. We were spiritually dead. We were sinfully devilish. We were stupidly disobedient. We were sensually deprived. Those are four things that we of ourselves could not fix to change. Then Ephesians 2 verse for the first two words. But God. It took God to step in to make the change in us that we need. It is of an election of grace. Ephesians 1 verses 2 to 4. Two grace be to you, and peace, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Three blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. For according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We were chosen in the elect. In Christ in love and in a call to duty. The election of grace is of the empowering through God on us in us upon us through us to us and we were made to respond in faith we were chosen from the beginning to salvation. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 13 say we were are bound to give thanks always unto God because he has from the beginning chosen us to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. John 13 verse 18 says that God knows the chosen ones. Ephesians 1 verse 5 says having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Ephesians 1 verse 11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Not all are among the elect. John 3 verse 16 has a whosoever believe group. That group is chosen of God to respond to the gospel when they hear it presented. The ones of the whosoever group have been ordained to respond to God's call. Acts 13 verse 48 lets us know that the elect were ordained to eternal life. John 15 verse 16 says the elect is chosen of God and they don't make the choice to be chosen. John 15 verse 16 Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should come unto me and bring forth fruit, and your fruit among the elect shall remain. There is the whosoever of the elect John 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world, 
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, 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 believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The whosoever is not everybody deciding to to believe, it is just the whosoever of God's elect awaken to respond to believe. Ephesians 5 verse 14 Wherefore, let the whosoever awake from their spiritual sleep and arise from the dead, that the delight of Christ shall light upon them to shine as his chosen ones. The as many as are ones that are of the elect chosen too. In John 1 verse 12. I will read John 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Only as many as believe are the elect. If you are not of the elect in whosoever and as many as you are in another group that seem to be choosing of yourself. If you chose yourself you may unchoose to lose. 1 John 2 verse 19 says they went out from us, but they were not of the elect of us, for if they had been of the elect of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out, that they might be made manifest not to be among the elect chosen to aside that they were not all of us to stay. They called themselves. Many are called few are chosen. The exercise of the elect when called will be recreated to respond to the call as the elect of God under His grace. Romans 11. 5 says even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, did you hear that? The election of grace. Romans 9 verse 16 So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy to the elect he has chosen and called to be in Christ. The end result of the elect is to get in Christ and stay in in Christ by the Spirit's working. It is God who creates and it is God who recreates. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 says, But of God's grace work are you fixed to be in Christ, who of God was made to be wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification redeemed as the elect of grace in Christ. I know I was talking about hell, God has highlighted the elect also in 2 Peter 3 verse 9 as the any that will never see hell. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is longsuffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish in hell but that all should come to repentance as the elect under grace. 1 Peter 1 verses 1-2 1 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ writing to all the saints, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace, be multiplied. The any of 2 Peter 3 verse 9 are the same elect that Peter is writing to as he says in 1 Peter 1 verses 1 to 2. 1 Peter 1 verses 1 to 2 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ writing to all the saints, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace, be multiplied. The elect will respond in grace and faith unto good work as God enabled them through the Spirit to recreate them to do so when they hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ preached. Living Jesus loved us, dying Jesus saved the elect and buried he carried the sins of the elect far far away. Rising Yezu justified the elect and freed them forever, and one day Jesus is coming back to rapture the elect chosen from the foundation of the world. This is the gospel truth. The elect will have a grace experience that only God through the Spirit can do when the gospel is preached. To awaken the elect of faith and repentance to get in Christ to glorify God. Ephesians 1 verse 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. And Ephesians 1 verse 11 In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. Ed to save all from hell he paid a cost with his blood to save the lost to be the spiritual boss. Are you listening? Please listen. Sin will be pardoned in Christ or punished in hell, but it will never be overlooked. Would you take this opportunity to trust Jesus Christ? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, Acts 16 verse 31. No one listening to me right now needs to go to hell. Let's bow our heads and pray together and say, Oh, Jesus, I know if I die today that I'd go to heaven rather than hell. I know it because I have a Bible promise that I can repent of all my sins, I and take Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I now by God's Spirit, bear in witness with my spirit that I want to be a child of God right now. I thank God that, if I died right now, I'd go to heaven rather than hell. 
Father, I pray that many today will say an everlasting yes to Jesus Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. I want to turn this part of the podcast over to Sister Grace, the Faith Clinic Fellowship announcer. She will give a word of support on how you can donate to the Faith Clinic Fellowship cause of sharing Jesus Christ in the world. Here is Sister Grace. Hello, I am Sister Grace, the Faith Clinic Fellowship podcast announcer. Hey, if you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Faith Clinic Fellowship is a ministry of good ground to sow your sea of faith and financial pledge. On your phone you can make a Cash App donation to the Faith Clinic Fellowship Outreach. The Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. That Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. It's on the screen. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more to the Faith Clinic cause. There is a financial covenant you can enter into to give a donation. Psalms 50 verse 5 says, Gather the saints of God together to give by a covenant offering in a sacrifice. Bring a seed of money to the Lord to sow towards your harvest expectation. There are 25 of you listing that can sow a seed of faith. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more to the Faith Clinic cause. Your offering that you give will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. It will go into your future to multiple as an expected harvest from your seed sown. If you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Nothing leaves heaven until something leaves the earth out of your hand, says John 3 verse 27. You can sow. Sow what? Sow your seed towards a harvest in expectation. The Bible says you can sow for a healing, a financial breakthrough. New job. Deliverance from drug use and self-abuse. On your phone you can make a Cash App donation to the Faith Clinic Fellowship Outreach. The Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. That Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. It's on the screen. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more to the Faith Clinic cause. If you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Sell an offering today without delay. To Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. Let's return to Evangelist Terry Brunson's topic of study.